His eyes are closed. Oh, you're a goofy little bird. Jeffrey, you don't eat bird seed. You're not that type of bird. Welcome, folks. This is a story about a rescue Jeffrey. It was a heck of an experience I don't think I'll ever forget. So Jeffrey came into our care when a co-worker of mine found him doing some routine inspections. She nearly stepped on him. Knowing that I have a bit of a thing for helping out rescue birds, she gave me a call. We were able to have a good chat, and I was able to find out some key information, like if there was a nest nearby. Because if there is, it's always best to get these birds back into their nest and just let nature do its course. I was also able to find out if he had feathers, if his eyes were open. And I really liked what I heard, so I decided to bring him in because I figured we could give him a helping hand. I knew on first sight that Jeffrey was a swallow. I just wasn't sure if he was a barn swallow or a cliff swallow. You really have to wait for their adult feathers to come in to know the difference between the two. The barn swallow has a V'd tail, where a cliff is a straight, and the barn swallow has a brownish breast and a little bit of a brown patch on his forehead with an incomplete collar. So I could tell once his feathers were in, he was definitely a barn swallow. Once we got him home, I was able to take a real good look at him and find out if he had any injuries. Thankfully, everything seemed pretty good. His feet worked, wings moved in and out properly, head moved around, except he had one eye that didn't seem to want to open. At this point, Jeffrey would be considered an early fledgling. Fledglings being when birds are leaving the nest, which is called fledging. He was really dehydrated, hungry, and very tired. I was able to get a little bit of water into Jeffrey using a syringe. I figured that was a good thing to do first before food, just to help his body out. After we got that water into him, next step was food. I really wasn't all that prepared. This happened on pretty short notice. So I went out digging in the garden and I figured some earthworms would do the trick. I was really hoping I was able to cut them up and feed him with tweezers because I wasn't really sure what my plan would be otherwise. Thankfully, he didn't hesitate. He was starving and just took those earthworms down. After having such a big day and getting some water and food into him, this little guy was tuckered. So he went ahead, assembled his nest, and got him down into it. Sure didn't take him long to fall fast asleep. The family and I spent the rest of the evening really just watching him. He was so cute and we couldn't get enough of him. He'd wake up from time to time, we'd offer some more worms, and then he'd fall right back down to sleep. He was so exhausted. So I was just checking in on this little guy, and he worked pretty hard to get to the side of that nest so that he didn't make a mess in it. And then we went ahead and tucked him in for the evening. I was really unsure what was gonna happen overnight. All right, good morning there, folks. Looks like our little birdie birdie made it through the night. He's still alive. I see both eyes open and blinking here. Let's see if he's hungry. It's at this point, I think it's pretty obvious how lethargic he is. He didn't have any interest in eating in the morning. He hadn't eaten all night, but I just kept trying and trying and trying. And eventually, persistence did start to pay off. I got him to take that worm. Now, I come to later find out that worms aren't really the best thing for these guys to eat. They don't digest the skins very well. And on cue, he tucks his head around and falls back fast asleep. You can see in his feathering here, he does have a lot of the adult feathers in. However, there is still some downy feathers underneath that's preventing him from flying. It's definitely amazing what some rest can do for you. When I got back from the pet store, I was pleasantly surprised to see him perched up on the side of his nest 
working hard to clean out all those downy feathers and a little bit of a coating that was on his adult feathers, you can see some of it landing on the bottom of the nest. This was a really good sign. You see him stretching out. It shows that he's really made a turnaround and I'm a lot less concerned for his well-being at this point. I went to the pet store to pick up mealworms because I knew that swallows, they don't eat seeds. They're strictly insect eaters. But while I was there, I actually ran into a local wildlife rehabilitator. Never gotten to meet this person before, so it was quite a coincidence, and I was able to pick her brain and learn quite a bit about these birds. We talked about their diet. This is where I learned that worms Earthworms are not a good food source for these type of birds because the outer skin is, can be very hard for them to digest. Um, she mentioned mealworms are good, crickets if you take the legs off or the wings, and you can also catch moths and other things at night. And again, early on you need to take the wings off because they can choke on it and nothing bright colored. Another thing was their body temperature is around 102 degrees Fahrenheit, so they should always feel warm to the touch and I often added in supplemental heating in the evenings to help them out. Being warm is key to their digestion. Oh, I, think it's, I think it's too big. Yeah, it's too big. There. And then you kind of bring it down like this. You'll follow it. Yep. There you go. Good job. And this became our daily routine. Barn swallows don't eat a lot at once, but they eat frequently. So we were constantly taking breaks in our day to feed him. And then he was also taking breaks in his day to really work on his grooming. It also didn't take very long for us to run out of mealworms. I significantly underestimated how much this little guy will eat. So I wound up going back to the pet store for a second time, and in that time, they let me use a cage for free. They knew what I was doing, they knew it was a rescue, and they were more than happy to help. So thank you very much, Chow Time Pet Supply. It's really appreciated. I know Jeffrey likes his new digs. It did not take Jeffrey long to learn that we're here to help him. And then the bond began. He took any opportunity to cuddle up with us, snuggle in our hands, warm up, and fall fast asleep. And then as the days went on, he began to fly around a little bit inside our house. And at that point, he would be perched on your shoulders or your head, and he absolutely had to be with you almost all the time. If he was in his cage and you were in the house, he was squawking until you let him out to ride around on your shoulder. The bond we made with him was amazing. He really connected with every part of the family and it was such a cool experience and I'm really glad my son could experience that. There's not many times when you bond with an animal that well and it was really really cool. We also got to observe and listen to all the neat things that he does and the calls he has. I believe we had Jeffrey indoors for about eight days. And in that time, there was a very large transformation. You could see all that downy feather come out and his full feathers come in. And there was a big change in his attitude too. Once he got back healthy and up to speed, he really wanted out of that cage. So it was time to start working on getting him off mealworms and on to some other food that he could readily find in the wild. So we weaned him off mealworms and transitioned him to what we refer to as fish flies. They're larvae that come out of the lake and they hatch and turn into a fly. Their season isn't all that long. I do believe some people refer to them as mayflies and he absolutely loved them. We started with hand feeding and then we transitioned to making him get them for himself. And then I even transitioned to making them fly to get the food. Well, and there you have it. It feels like it's ending just as fast as it started. 
It was becoming really clear that Jeffrey was done with being in the cage. He could fly, he learned how to catch some food, and he was ready for release. Jeffrey was always intended to be a release, never a pet. Although, after getting to spend a week with him, I really would have enjoyed to keep him. He was a pretty cool bird and unbelievably affectionate. I really enjoy the time we got to spend together and I'm really thankful for the experience my son got out of all of this. So there we go. It was time. We sent him off. Well, did you think it was going to end there? Nope. I guess there's a reason they say never work with children or animals. They never do what you want. So, we're now into the evening of what I'll refer to as release day number one. And uh, he's pretty much spent most of the day outside. Well, he has spent most of the day outside and alone. Checked on him a few times. I've been trying to hold some fish flies out and, and make him grab them while flying. And he did manage to do it a couple of times. But uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to want to go today. So I think what my plan is for today is to give him maybe a bit of a soft start. Got to spend the whole day outside flying around. I watched him go for some nice long flights, stretch out. If, uh, if he's still around by nightfall, we're going to bring him in for the night and we'll try again tomorrow. And like all good things, they come to an end. We brought Jeffrey in that evening. We filled his belly, got in a lot more snuggles. And then the next morning, filled him up again, let him outside. He hung around for a little bit, but then he took off and he hasn't been seen again. I sure hope he's doing well out there. Well, that's Jeffrey's story. If you liked the video, I really appreciate it. And thanks again for watching.